It's the UnCampaign, and it just might get Joe Biden elected. Hi, I'm Scott Otto. Oh, this is yeah, Bill sure. Whittle now. And Bill, this is the story from the LA Times, uh, Washington columnist uh, Doyle McManus. And uh, he says that the situation with the coronavirus pandemic has forced Joe Biden underground at a time when he would probably be out, uh, you know, in front of cheering throngs of people as he swept his way toward an eventual uh, White House berth. Um, and but he's saying that maybe this is the best thing that ever happened to Joe Biden, basically because uh, right now you, nobody's paying attention anyway until after Labor Day to the presidential election. Laying low at this time is great. And he thinks that Biden is relatively smart to minimize his public contact in the, in the sense of he's not out there everywhere, because if he were out there everywhere, people don't want to hear from critics right now. They want to hear from the decision makers. Uh, so first of all, what do you think of the Biden strategy of basically saying, stay out of the spotlight, appear calm and let Trump implode. I think I think that this man has a, an ex, the, the author of the article has an extremely acute and and highly accurate and informative view of Joe Biden's 1988 campaign ideas. <laughs> I think I think that is exactly what I would have done if I was advising Joe Biden in his 1988 campaign for president. However, for this lunatic to say, no, it's good that Joe is staying home because while he should be out there, in other in other circumstances, unless I mis misunderstood what you say is the, is the setup for the article, and I understand you paraphrase these things, but I think what the guy is saying is, um, if there had been no COVID nineteen, Joe would be out there now in front of thousands of people at rallies, and his and, it, and his enthusiasm would be going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Yes. Yeah, I don't think this guy's actually seen Joe Biden since 1988, honestly, <laughs> because because Joe Biden now is is doing home mini statements off of notes and he can't he can't get those right for this guy to say that. No, no, no. Uh, uh, this may be smart of Joe to stay at home because otherwise he'd be out there really, really rallying the crowds. If Joe Biden had been out on the public scene, if this virus hadn't have been here and Joe Biden had to be on the campaign trail, no matter how much they try to limit his time, the gaffomatic machine would be would be melting. There was just not enough water available to cool the thing. The 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 entire premise of why he's saying this is is totally backwards and he knows it. But. There is something to be said for the fact that this coronavirus keeping Joe out of the spotlight and away from actual humans is helping Biden, and I believe it is helping Biden, only to the degree that it's a good excuse for people to not have to watch Joe Biden perform in public. This is a subject we've covered many times on this show and on, and on our Right Angle show, and, and somewhere Several months ago, we don't know, and it wasn't just me, it was you and, and me and all, all of the pundits, all conservative pundits, somewhere a couple months ago, this thing turned the corner from, wow, this guy is, you know, turned the corner to this is a national disgrace and a personal tragedy. You know, this, this isn't even funny anymore. This isn't funny. This isn't political. It's just plain sad. And for, and for Joe Biden, who took four days, four days, with a staff of hundreds and whatever millions and millions of dollars he's raised on the campaign trail. It took four days for him to set up what our little company here did in an hour and does every day, which is a, a live podcast to the country. And Joe Biden reading off a teleprompter can't get that right. He's sending cues like, scroll up, scroll up. Let me, let me just make this a little clearer for our audience at home. <laughs> And and he thinks that somehow we don't see this. This is how this is how far gone he is. Joe Biden, Joe Biden is, and this is not. I'm not. I really, have, you know, I'm not censoring myself because of of other people's opinions or or or. I'm I'm just doing it out of common decency. You know, this is not. This is not right. It's not right. The, the guy's faculties are, are crumbling in front of the nation's eyes. How the, how the Democrats have the, have the unmitigated, it's not even gall anymore. It's cruelty. It's just plain cruelty to put this man out there as their, as their, as their galvanized corpse, you know? I mean, really, 
honestly, we're not too far away from running Lenin's mummy. You know, it's like, here's the body that we're going to put on the name of the ticket, vote for him. And then we all know that whoever his vice president is going to be is going to be the president. We are going to trot this poor, doddering, deluded, demented guy out and continue his national humiliation in order to have the best chance we can to defeat Donald Trump. And if you think, if you think that the arrival of COVID-19 has bought Joe a reprieve, I think you probably could make that case because Joe has had a reasonable excuse to not be on the campaign trail now. But if you think that this virus uh, arriving is somehow going to help Joe Biden when it comes time for the fall, and he has to debate Donald Trump on what Trump actually did, Joe Biden is not going to know what century he's in. He's just not. And and it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be such a massacre that I believe Donald Trump will will simply just say that, that we we just you know. I'm, we're not going to do this anymore. This isn't this isn't right, and it's not fair. Now, Bill, you probably know better than anyone in the media the way that, despite the fact that everything you say about Joe Biden is widely embraced on the right, the people on the left are getting a different message, and we've probably never had more of an ideological silo system than we do now, where essentially the people on the left hear only the stuff that the people on the left want to hear, and the people on the right hear only the stuff that the people on the right want to hear. And so the perception on the left, and this guy Doyle McManus from the LA Times, is basically saying that Joe Biden, through limited contacts with the media, is projecting a calm, steady, predictable leadership that reinforces what his previous campaign concept was, which is electing Joe Biden means a return to to normalcy. Now, you reject all of that out of hand, but can you really mm -hmm. deny that about half the country is hearing that message and saying, yeah, that sounds pretty good? I do deny it. <clears throat> and I deny it for a number of reasons. Joe Biden's response to the coronavirus, his public statements anyway, have been to either steal Donald Trump's positions and advocate them as his own, or rack up a case of uh, Pinocchios, which are awards given for lying. This is a three Pinocchio story. That's a pretty big uh, misrepresentation of the truth. Even the Washington Post is saying Biden's on a Pinocchio streak, may never be matched or e equaled by anybody else. Even the, even the Post is saying he's lying, but that's not the point I'm making because I understand the point you're making. The point you're making is, is that the people who believe in Joe Biden don't see anything other than this. They get this kind of capsulized message and they have faith in him. I don't believe that's true. I've seen the look on interviewers' faces on MSNBC, and I forget the name, but I, I have... I not only forget the name, I forget the entire press credentials of this young woman who was who was placing the softball on the tea bar, you know, placing the softball on the tea and handing Joe the bat, you know, and, and saying, okay, Joe, any time now. And, and Biden would struggle with these answers. And she was like, no, no, go on. And, and you could just see the look on her face, the, just the look of just sheer, you know, disbelief, disappointment, and, and kind of flop sweat in terms of you're on air live with the, uh, with the uh, Democratic Party's nominee for president, and he can't finish a sentence, and you're interviewing him, what are you going to do next? And, uh, no, no, it's okay. No, uh, no, uh, I probably shouldn't say that. Watch Biden. Watch Biden. If you look at a history of, of his gaffes put together, and I've seen a tape, it's, it's 15 minutes long, and those are the greatest hits. What you'll see is a, a, a constant um, mumbling and, and, and vocal disintegration, which is a sign of, of Alzheimer's, a sign of, of, of severe memory loss. But a more telling response is Biden will start to answer something with some sort of a technical answer that requires some sort of recall of information. And he'll fumble for it, he'll fumble for it, he'll look at it, and, and then he'll say, look, you know what I'm saying. I mean, that's the, that, that should be the Biden campaign banner. It should be Biden 2020, quote, you know what I'm saying, unquote. Uh, it, it, it's a disgrace, Scott. It's a, it's a disgrace and, and, it's, and it's, it's pathetic in the non-snarky 
in the non-snarky meaning of the word. It generates pathos. It generates sympathy to me for this man who I disagree with about everything and who I think has behaved dishonorably from the beginning of his career with the whole um, the, the Bork thing and the Thomas thing. All of, I, I think he's a I think he's a terrible person as a politician, but but nobody deserves to go through this. And and uh, you know you you have to blame the Democratic Party for putting him out there in front of this. You have to blame his wife, who's apparently one of the major uh, supporters of Biden. And when I say a supporter of Biden, I mean somebody who stands behind Biden and holds him up. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about when I talk about a Biden supporter now, is somebody who's holding him up uh, as, he, as he stumbles through a prepared speech of four or five minutes that he can't finish. It, it's, it's in a time of crisis like this, it's unimaginable to me, but the Democrats are trapped. And and I'm not trying to blow my own horn here, but it's been obvious to me for the last two years since the 2018 election and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and, and Bernie Sanders moving that flag left and left and left and left. We've been talking for well over 18 months, the two of us, how the Democrats cannot have it both ways. They can't have the young radical uh, uh candidate that they want, the young socialist that they want, Bernie Sanders, young, young Bernie Sanders, they can't have him. And when it realized that it looked like it was going to be him, the Democratic Party just absolutely freaked out and said, who else have we got? Biden. Okay. Is he the only person left? Yeah, pretty much. No one else is polling above four or 5%. Great. Let's stick a, a metal pole up his back and, 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 and Velcro him in place and trot him out for four or five minutes every three weeks and see if we can fool the American people into thinking that this is the guy who was always known for his slow intellect. I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I, I understand why they're doing it. I understand it. But, but the cruelty of it, the inhumanity of it, the cynicism of it is still to this day, uh, not just repulsive to me, but genuinely shocking. It's like, it's, like watching, it's like watching somebody get hit by a car and then watching somebody go over and you think they're gonna help them and all they do is take the guy's watch and his wallet. That's what it feels like to me. It's like, are you serious? Now, even really? though the whole purpose of this column is basically to say to Democrats, calm down, everything's calm gonna down. be okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The best thing that, that Joe Biden could do right now is to hunker down and wait like the rest of us. So that's the overall point. It's supposed to be a balm on the uh, nervous consciences of uh, politically active Democrats. Uh, but he does say that, that, that Biden faces one sort of quandary, a conundrum, if you will, on how to handle this. Because on the one hand, he wants to be seen as being tough on President Trump, who Doyle McManus, this columnist in the LA Times, sees as having botched this whole response to the coronavirus thing and filled his public press conferences with falsehoods and 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 phony predictions. Uh, and at, on the other hand, uh, Biden doesn't want to be too critical of the guy who's leading us through this warlike situation. And so he's trying to offer constructive criticism. Uh, he points out, uh, McManus does, that in an MSNBC interview, Biden kind of couldn't figure out how to walk this line. And at one point said uh, about President Trump, why doesn't he just act like a president? Uh, I saw that. Then he said, uh, that, that's a stupid way to say it. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> that was the is, interview I was talking about. Is there any way to walk that line? If you're running, let's just say you're running, forget about Joe Biden himself or his mental acuity. But if you're running against a sitting president of the United States through a major crisis, how do you walk the line of saying, look, I'd be a better choice than this guy. And on the other hand, I'm not going to attack the guy who is essentially the standard bearer for the American fight against the enemy. I'll come back to that, but I will just use this question you just asked me as a response to your previous question. You say he's writing this article to, to bomb the, uh, the uh, anxious nerves of, of the Democrats out there. Why do they have anxious nerves? If because Joe they didn't really see Joe, a, because he's hidden. That's oh, is, what he's saying. Is that it? Yeah, he's saying because okay, he's so going underground. Let's, so, well, <laughs> I think it was three or four days after Joe Biden's online video conference the Democratic nominee for president had 15,000 views on YouTube. Three or four days afterwards, 15,000 views on YouTube. Hell, we are less pathetic than that. And we have- <laughs> The Biden we people have, are on the uh, phone. So They'd like a guest we, shot on your show. They, you're, you're damn right. Yeah, get, get Biden on, um, on Bill Wilder now, raise his numbers a little bit. Uh, so so back to the to the other question, how do you walk that line? You can't walk a line on a, on a, you cannot 
Joe Biden is not capable of walking this line. He does not have the mental acuity for it. If you want to if you want to see how you walk the line, I think you look at Mario Cuomo. I think if you look at Mario Cuomo, you see how you walk the line. I think Cuomo's done a very good job politically, and I think he's done a pretty good job as governor, too, all things considered, uh, with a lot of caveats. Uh, but Cuomo is, is basically taking a position of cooperating with the president, but what he's essentially seems to be doing to me in the larger political sense is he's smart enough to not get into a shooting war with the president of the United States, who by all accounts from Como and Newsom and, and everyone else has been doing a really good job of giving the states the support they need. Uh, unfortunately for the left, the, the orange man dictator hasn't taken enough federal dictatorial powers yet, but put that aside, the governors in the, in the most critically hit states say he's, that Trump has, has given them everything that they needed. So what Como is doing, I think, is, and what I think is smart, is he's not so much criticizing Donald Trump, but he is saying areas where he's setting himself apart from Trump's policies, and then he's kind of trumpeting uh, those aspects of it. And that's smart. And, 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 and Como's uh, opinion, uh, poll ratings are going way high. The Democratic Party is just swooning. There are, are professional journalists, at least by, by, by name anyway, they're tax returns, say, journalists, who are writing swooning articles about him in his white polo shirt, you know, and all the rest of it. But, but look, I don't think Como's stupid enough to get into the middle of this mess. Um, I, I am concerned about them substituting Como for, for Biden only because I think Como would be a more difficult challenge. I still think Trump would beat him severely, but but he'd certainly be a tougher challenge. And and playing this one out, there doesn't seem to be really any way that that's going to happen. And the main reason it's not going to happen is not because of the morality of the Democratic Party, and it's not because they wouldn't be willing to stab Joe in the back at the last minute and make a run for the marbles. They'll do anything. But I think that Como realizes that that right now he Andrew Como. Uh, not not Fredo. Uh, Andrew Como is in uh, is in extremely good position for 2024, and if he moves in now and usurps Biden's position, then he alienates the Biden supporters. He alienates the Bernie supporters. He he basically revs up some interest, maybe gets some of the middle back by being a little more competent, but he splits the Democratic Party now into three parts. Now you got your Biden camp, your Bernie camp, and your Como camp. I think he realizes that the Democratic Party is is so badly split now that it's got essentially no chance in 2020. And I think Como is savvy enough and young enough and genuinely intelligent enough, uh, despite the fact that he's a painted over communist, is, is smart enough to understand, no, the thing to do now is to lead New York, which is hardest hit in this country through this pandemic, offer all the support he can to uh, candidate Biden, go out on the stump for him, be a good soldier, loyal soldier, deliver New York or whatever, and, and, and then in 2024, be an excellent position. And I mean excellent position. In fact, not only excellent position, after what happened to the 2020 Democratic field of contenders, where none of them came out of it with more than four or 5%, that after 2020, and Donald Trump's reelection, Como then is the, he's the only guy on the field. He's their guy. And I don't, I don't think Como's stupid enough to, um, to screw that up because if he does run, I think he'll be beaten. And I think Como knows he'll be beaten if for no other reason that the Democratic Party is so badly fractured. And America has low tolerance for losers. Uh, the days of William Jennings Bryant running three consecutive times for president and losing three consecutive times are over. You usually don't get a second shot in American politics at the presidential level, and I think that's appropriate. I think I'd probably have to say Nixon was probably the last guy on a, on a national level to lose on a national ticket and come back and win. Hillary 16 run was not was a second run, but she wasn't the actual nominee in 2008. So, you know, Como, I don't see any reason why Como would do that. But but in answer to your question, what what Biden should be doing is doing what Como is doing. But Joe has got nothing like the intellect for that left, and he had nothing like the intellect for that in the beginning anyway. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you look right below me here in the description under this video, you will see a link to the Patriot Post and an offer that they have right now to give you a free Patriots Primer on American Liberty when you sign up for their also free news uh, alerts that they send out by email. We encourage you to do that. Um, every time you click that link and sign up for that, that helps the folks here at uh, BillWhittle.com and the members mm. thereof who make it possible for us to produce this programming. Uh, I will tell you that there are main sources of income, our membership dollars, uh, where you can sign up as a member at BillWhittle.com by clicking that Become a Member link. And uh, we do get some advertising revenue from YouTube and then this cooperative partnership we have with the Patriot post. YouTube is getting to be a tougher road to hoe uh, because more and more, especially during the coronavirus pandemic, their algorithm, due to their understaffing, they say, uh, mm. is automatically uh, pushing us out of the monetization column and into the sit and wait column until we get around to deciding whether until, we should monetize. Until the viewing curve has safely yes, subsided. Until everybody's at which point already the seen the video. At which point? Then, at point we, then we get, yeah, then they say, so, okay, it's safe to monetize case, these guys. When, when you go to our website and sign up as a Remember, when you go to the Patriot Post and sign up for their newsletter, all of that helps to advance this these ideas of liberty that we are circulating around the world. And we are grateful both for the Patriot Post and for our members for making that possible. For Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks for watching.